this video is going to go through um, a review of the properties of exponents and hopefully this um, is a review for you from um, what you learned in middle school. So the first um, property that we're going to go through is product of like bases. So we have a which is our base and m our exponent another a as our base and n as the exponent so as long as the bases are the same then we're going to add our exponents here's an example I have x to the fifth and x to the third since I have the same base of x I go ahead and add their exponents and it becomes x to the eighth one way to think about this x to the fifth would be five x's times x to the third which would be three x's and if I add all those x's up, I have 8x's. Of course, we don't want to do that every time. So if you can remember that when you are multiplying and you have, excuse me, like bases, then you're going to raise them, um, and you're, excuse me, then you're going to add them, um, add their exponents together. So here are some examples. I suggest that you pause the video and see how many of these you can do and then um, unpause it and see if you get them correct. Alright, so for the first one, like base of x, so I'm going to take, and they're being multiplied, so I'm going to take x to the third and x to the fourth, add them together, and I get x to the seventh. Here I have x to the fifth, and then this, my invisible one, so I have x to the fifth, x to the first, I'm going to add their exponents and I get x to the sixth. Here I just look at the x's because I don't have a y, another y. So x to the sixth and x to the fourth combine to make x to the tenth, and then my y squared is j is y squared. Here all bases are the same, so again I have my invisible one, add them together and I get y to the twenty-sixth. Here I have um, two numbers, 5 and 6, that are going to get multiplied together, so that gives me 30. And then a like base of r, add them together and you get 9. Here I am multiplying 4, and really this is a negative 1, so I need to put negative 4 out front, and then d has an exponent of 1, 4 and 1 together become 5. Raising a power to a power, so I've got a base of a raised to the m, and then I'm taking that entire, um, the, enti the base and the exponent and raising it to the n power. In that case, I'm going to multiply the exponents together rather than add them. So here's an example. I have x to the fifth raised to the third power. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 3 and get 15. Again, if I have x to the fifth raised to the third power, that's the same as x to the fifth times itself three times. And I can take 5, 10, and 15 and add them together. But again, I can just remember to multiply them. And it's a little bit faster. Once again, I would suggest that you pause the video, see how many of these you can do on your own and get correct. Alright, so the first one, and again I'm going to multiply, it's a power to a power, so I'm going to multiply and then get x to the 20th. Here I'm raising it to the third power, remember my exponent here is 1, so 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. 8 to the 7th, b to the 7th, sorry that's an a, and then here I have 2 to the 4th, all raised to the 3rd power, so that's going to become 2 to the 4 times 3, which is 12. Why this pen likes to do this. x to the 8th, y to the 12th. Again, I'm multiplying 2 times 4 to get 8, and 3 times 4 to get 12. 
and then I have 3 to the 3rd and x to the 15th and if the answer is asked to be simplified completely then you're going to want to simplify 3 to the 3rd so you've got 3 times 3 times 3 which is 27 x to the 15th Alright, so here are some more that you're going to want to try and see how many you can get. Um, we have sort of a combination of the two properties so far. I would pause it once again and try these on your own. So when I look at these, remember that everything in the parentheses is being raised to the second power, so I'm going to have negative 3 squared, so that's negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9, and then x power to a power, so I multiply x to the 8. Here I'm distributing, so I get negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. a squared and a, I'm multiplying my bases, which means I'm going to add my exponents, so it's going to be a to the third plus negative 2 a squared b squared. And again, that could just be minus instead of plus. Again, here I'm distributing, so I get 14 x. I'm multiplying these together, which means I'm going to add my exponents. Minus 21 x to the 12th. Negative 3 to the third is going to be negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27 y to the 12th. Negative 6 times negative 6 is going to be positive 36. c to the 10th, d to the 12th. Here I've got 3 cubed, 3 to the 3rd, which is 27, x to the 15th. Hopefully you're doing pretty well with these. Alright, our next property is a quotient of like bases. So I've got, I'm dividing and I have the same base of A. So in this case I'm going to subtract my exponents. Typically, um, you'll ask to be giving your answers um, with only positive exponents, which means that you always, um, you're going to want to um, subtract and then possibly even move um, your um, your variables. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Alright, so you're going to subtract as long as they have the same base. Another way to think about this, I, yes, I've got 5 minus 3 and that becomes x squared, but if I've got x to the fifth on top, that's 5x's on top, x to the third on bottom is 3x's, and then I can get rid of three of them because they cancel top and bottom and I'm just left with two. Quotient to a power is pretty straightforward. You um, raise the numerator and the denominator to that power. So in this example, power to a power, so I multiply that x becomes x to the twelfth and power to a power I multiply and I end up with um, x, y squared, which becomes y to the 8th. Alright, so let's look at each of these dealing with quotients. Everything's being raised to the 7th power, so I would simplify this x to the 7th over y to the 7th. In this case, I can subtract 10 minus 4, and I get a to the 6th. Here I end up uh, simplifying, reducing 15 over 5, which is 3. 6 minus 2, looking at my x's, is going to be x to the 4th. And 7 minus 4 is going to be y cubed. Here I'm going to simplify um, by raising this to the power first. So I've got x to the 9th over y to the 3rd times y to the 5th over x to the fifth. And since I'm multiplying, it doesn't matter that they are not right on top of each other. I can still go ahead and subtract. So I'm going to have 9 minus 5, so that's going to be x to the fourth. 
and 5 minus 3, so y squared. Here I'm subtracting, so I have x to the um, second, 7 minus 5. And then here I'm going to raise it to the power. I'm going to leave my 2's um, unmultiplied to begin with. So I've got 2 to the 5th, x to the 20th, over 2 squared, x to the 6th. So now with my 2's I can subtract 5 minus 2 is 3. So I've got 2 to the 3rd, again 5 minus 2 is 3, and then x to the 14th. And then my 2 to the 3rd can multiply out and become 8. zero exponent. Anything raised to the zero power is equal to one. But why? Well, let's go back to the property we were just talking about, and let me give this example. x cubed over x cubed. Would you agree that x cubed over x cubed is equal to one? Would you agree that any number over itself is equal to one? Well, I hope you will, because that's true. Now let's remember that property we just looked at, and let's go ahead and subtract. I've got x to the third over x to the third. If I subtract their exponents, 3 minus 3 is going to give me 0. And there we go. That's going to be equal to 1. So in this case, everything in this set of parentheses is being raised to the 0 power, which means the entire expression is going to be equal to 1. All right, negative exponents. We've talked about subtracting, but with negative exponents, this is kind of a, um, you might have to deal with when you subtract because you are maybe having a, you have a smaller number on in the numerator than you're subtracting in the denominator. Either way, um, you're going to basically move the negative exponent either up or down to make it positive. So for example, in this first example, I have really, I can put it over 1 if I want to, but I've got 8 to the negative 2. In order to make this negative exponent a positive exponent, I have to move it into the denominator, and then it becomes 8 to the positive 2. And then when I simplify, 1 over 64. Another example, I've got x to the negative 3 in the denominator. As soon as I move this whole thing up, it becomes x to the positive 3 in the numerator. So let's look at these negative exponents. Again, here if I subtract negative 3 minus 4, I'm going to end up with r to the negative 7 on top, and I'm going to have to move it anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this down. And you don't have to show all of these steps, but when I move it down, I've got r to the positive 3 now and r to the positive 4, and that's going to simplify to be r to the 7. 1 over, excuse me, r to the 7. Alright, in this case, I'm actually going to add these two together first because sometimes that eliminates my negative um, and I don't have to worry about moving it. But I'm going to combine them and remember I'm multiplying their bases, which means I'm going to add the exponents. So when I add them, it becomes x to the negative 3. And then in order to make it a positive exponent, I'm going to move it down into the denominator. All right, and then this one, um, everything's getting squared, so 3 squared is going to be 9. And then remember, multiplying, if I've got a power raised to a power, I'm going to multiply the exponents, becomes negative 10. And in order to make this have a positive x, I'm going to move it. I'm not going to move the 9. I'm only going to move the um, variable that has a negative exponent. So 9 stays on the top, and x to the 10th goes into the denominator. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and multiply. When I do that, I'm multiplying my exponents. I get x to the negative 6. And then in order to make this have a positive exponent, I'm going to put 1 over x to the 6. In this case, I'm going to um, go ahead and subtract um, if I can. In this case, Remember, I've got the same number over itself, so my y's actually just subtract, or excuse me, just cancel each other out. 
And then in this case, remember I was talking about before, um, if I move automatically subtract, then I'm just going to end up with a larger negative number on top and I'm going to have to move it anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and move it down because I know it's not, um, it's going to stay, everything's going to stay negative if I just move the 3 up. So when I move that down, I've got z to the positive ninth now and z to the third. And when I add those exponents together, I get z to the 12. Lastly, I've got r to the seventh, t to the fifth. And then I'm multiplying a power, um, raising a power to a power, so I'm going to multiply the exponents, r to the negative six, t to the negative two. And then I'm going to add my exponents to simplify before I move anything, um, because I may not need to move it once I have simplified. So r to the seventh, r to the negative six, I'm going to add the exponents, just be, going to become r in the numerator, and then the denominator, five minus two, or five and negative two, becomes t. Alright, so again, I want you to try these on your own, and then um, by pausing the video and trying them, and then re uh, start playing it again and see how many you can get. Here I'm multiplying, so I'm going to add my exponents. Here I am simplifying. When I move this up, or either that or take 3 minus a negative 7, either way, when I move that up, that's going to become a positive 7. So x to the 3rd and x to the positive 7 is going to give me x to the 10th on top. And then I'm actually going to move this one down. It's going to become a positive 6. Y to the positive 5th and y to the positive 6th is going to give me y to the 11th in the denominator. Negative 2 to the third power is going to give me negative 8. I'm raising a power to a power, which means I'm going to multiply the exponents. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. Everything's getting raised to the negative 2 power, so I've got 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 8. Then everything with a negative exponent needs to be moved down to the denominator to have a positive exponent, so that's going to become 3 to the positive 2, 3 squared is 9, and then x to the positive 8. I'm going to combine by adding my exponent, so it's going to become x to the negative 7, it becomes 1 over x to the 7, and then lastly I've got x to the 8 over y to the 10th times y to the tenth over x. Again, I'm multiplying, so I've got x to the fifteenth. y to the tenth and y to the tenth cancel each other out. And I've got my larger um, exponent on the bottom, so I'm going to move my eight down. And when I do that, I'm going to have one over x to the negative eight when I move it down, and x to the fifteenth. The reason I didn't subtract or move the 15 up is because if I do that, I'm going to end up with a negative exponent in the numerator, and I'm going to have to move it anyways. Alright, and then I'm going to combine negative 8 and positive 15 become x to the 7th power. 